All right, so if you watch the last part, <laughs> here we are. What substitution can you make there? We've gone, we started with x equals sine y, and we're going to use that at the end here, right? Yeah, so you got it inside here now we have, <clears throat> I'm just going to flip it around as long as you know, grade eights don't like this when you reverse, put things on either side, but even after all these years, I'm still more comfortable if this is on the right and that's on the left. Um, if you if you change it around now, we can substitute sine of y. We know what that's equal to, right? It says at the beginning here that sine of y is equal to x. So you can replace sine of y with x. And then you have what the derivative is. 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared. This is the derivative of arc sine. Derivative of arc sine of x. Except I can't spell this morning. Okay, that's the derivative of y equals arc sine of x. Let's make a list of reasons why calculus students wouldn't like this. <laughs> Reasons why first year calculus students wouldn't like this. Um, well, I guess there's two parts. There's deriving it and then just it in general, like that expression. What? It's, it's, uh, well, it's, I mean, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, I guess, but <laughs> some, some may think it's ugly. I don't know. You think it's ugly? Okay. I was actually thinking of constructive reasons why you might think that. It's worth considering why they might not like it. The root, there's a root on the bottom. They like, they like uh, some of the other ones. Some of the other arc functions don't have a root on the bottom. This is not the ugliest one, by the way. It's not the most beautiful one, but it's not the ugliest one in, in, in your definition of ugly. Um, the other reason is it has to do with what you started with and what you ended with. What did we start with? Yeah, we started with a we started with a trig function, and we ended with we started with a trig function. We ended with no trig function. You know when you when you first learned about the the derivative of sine, and you learned that it was Cos, you said, oh, that's perfect. That's great, right? You were slightly uncomfortable then when you learned that the derivative of cosine was negative, negative sine. You didn't quite like that, but you, st you said you could live with that, right? Now the problem is we have this arc sine, which is something you haven't worked with very much, arc sine, but its derivative doesn't even have any trig functions in it. It is crazy. But that's, but that's what it is, okay? That's what its derivative is. Okay, let's uh, let's graph. I'm gonna pause first. You're right. If you if u is a function, u is one over this is one over square root of one minus x squared. This would just be one over square root of one minus whatever u is squared times whatever the derivative of u is. Right? If there's a if there's a different function in there, that's just the chain rule. Okay, just the chain rule. It's not like you have to, you don't have to learn something different. It's just using the chain rule. Okay, so this this uh, this one right here, x squared. If there's x squared in there, now this you have to get used to. This is not an exponent, right? That's not the same as. Okay, I would I would write this as arc sine of x. I think it's just calculator. Whoever. Somebody decided on those calculators that arc sine was too long to write above a button, I guess. I don't know. I don't know what the reason why they started using this sine inverse but or with a little negative one. It's I, I mean, I say that the calculator people invented it, but it's not because this is a notation for inverse function, f inverse with the little negative one. It's just unfortunate because, I mean, that that's the same as doing the reciprocal, but... When people are using that negative one here, they don't mean the reciprocal. You just have to get used to that. 
the derivative of arc sine of x squared is going to be it's going to be just using the chain rule, right? You know, it's one over square root of one minus x squared squared, right? One minus let's put that in there and a different color even x squared. It's not much of a different color, is it? And then times, what do we need here? 2x. Times 2x. Okay, 2x over square root of 1 minus x to the fourth. It's just using the chain rule. There's nothing nothing different about that. Um, this is going out of order a bit, but I think if we graph the cos inverse function, you'll see what the what's going on here. And you'll see how its derivative is related. Uh, how did I get rid of that red stuff before? You're at the end. Now, I'm not sure if you're okay with thinking in terms of radians right now. But if you do sine of pi divided by 2 on your calculator, it goes to this black curve and it says... Okay, where am I going here? Uh, pi over 2, it's 1, right? It returns that value. Or if you go sine of pi, it says, what is that? Go along this black curve here, here to here, it's 0. If you do sine of 3 pi over 2 and so on, this would be helpful if you guys stop talking, okay? And negative 1, so you're going all the way to here. You can put in any angle, and it'll give you the the ratio, right? You could put in a really large angle that's way off the screen. It'll give you the angle. But when you do when you do sine inverse, when you do sine inverse of negative one, it's not going to give you three pi over two back, right? It does the closest thing that it can find, right? When you use the sine inverse, it always goes between pi over two and negative pi over two. That's that's why it always it uses this blue curve, right? Even though even though negative one is the sine ratio for three pi over two, it's also the sine ratio for negative pi over two. If you do the inverse here and you say sine inverse of three pi over two, it it only looks within that first part. It's going in the reverse. It's saying, okay, well if I put in whoops, I guess I'm doing the wrong thing here, aren't I? It's good, isn't it? What do I want to put in here? I want to put negative 1 in there. Sine inverse of negative 1, it says, well, negative 1 is, on the blue curve, it's, yeah, three pi, uh, it's not 3 pi over 2 because it's going to use the blue curve, right? It doesn't say, I guess I should switch this. Uh, remember, switch the axes here. This is negative pi over 2. It says negative 1 is this point right here, right? This end right here. Come on. No, it won't even do points for me. It's so confusing why. Right here, that one at the end, oh, it disappears, that's why. Oh, because it's too hard to do anyways. Pretend that's at the end of the thing. Uh, it says negative 1 must be negative, negative pi over 2. If you do positive 1, it gives you pi over 2. It goes within that range, right? Your calculator isn't going to ever give you an angle back of 5 pi over 2 or 7 pi over 2. It always gives you the closest one. It uses that blue. Uh, think about how your calculator works and relate it to the graph. If we do cos inverse, um, if we change this to cos inverse, what's the curve going to look like? Do you try and think about what cos inverse looks like? Uh, let's pause this while we... Okay. The middle part of that cosine curve is not a function. So you can't use that part. What you can use is this part up here. You can go from 0 to pi. That part could be a function, right? And the arc cos function is actually that chunk of it, right? If you keep going, of course, it's for sure not a function. That's the, that's the arc cos function. It's the chunk of the curve from 0 to pi, the inverse of that part. It's not like sine from there to there. And the reason is because that inverse would not be a function. You need it to be a function, right? You know in your calculator, if you relate this, I don't know if you, I don't know how uh, much you know about your calculator here, but if you do arc sine of a positive number, you get a positive number. 
If you do arc sine of a negative number, you get that same thing but negative. That's because of the symmetry of the thing. If you do arc cosine, it doesn't work that way, right? If you do arc cosine of a positive number, you get a quadrant one angle, right? If you do arc cos of a negative number, you don't get a negative angle. What do you get? You get a... Thank you. You get a... <laughs> Oh, nice to be tall. Seven. Oh, it's way over.